The trial, one of Franz Kafka's major works, was first published after his death in 1925. This surreal story of being caught up in the mindless bureaucracy of the law is so linked with the anxieties and sense of alienation of the modern age and with an ordinary person's struggle against an unreasoning and unreasonable authority. It's what being Kafkaesque is all about. He was influenced by Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and the brothers Karamazov. Kafka even went so far as to call Dostoevsky a member of his family. Like Kafka's other novels, the trial was never completed, although it does include a chapter which appears to bring the story to an intentionally abrupt ending. On his 30th birthday, Joseph K. wakes up and finds himself under arrest for an undefined crime. Willem and Franz, two guards dressed in black, come to inform K. of this in the lodging house he's living. The guards say that they are but lowly officials and have no further information about the reason for his arrest. K is introduced to the guard's superior in the room of another lodger. He informs K that his arrest won't prevent him from continuing his life and work as normal. After working the whole day in the bank where he holds a prominent position, K returns home and talks about the strange events and his case with Frau Grubach, the owner of the lodging house. After soothing him, Grubach upsets Kay when she insinuates the bad virtue of a fellow lodger Fräulein Burstner. Kay stays up that evening until Fräulein Burstner returns home and asks to speak to her in her room. He apologizes that the interrogation took place there this morning, of which she's totally ignorant, and ends up kissing her intensely. She responds to this sudden advance with exhaustion and indifference. On the next Sunday morning, Kay attends the first hearing of his trial. He arrives at a neglected tenement building and realizes that he wasn't given the exact address in that building to go to. He finds the attic courtroom by knocking on random apartment doors. After finally finding the courtroom, the examining magistrate tells him off for being late and begins the hearing by addressing Kay by a different person's name. K criticizes the court's disorder and tries to humiliate the magistrate in order to impress the many people there to watch the hearing. One side of the room seemed to be in his favor as they applaud him while the other half remains silent. During an interruption, K steps off the podium and mingles in the crowd only to discover that the men are not just public but members of the court too, and wear matching badges. He leaves in anger convinced the crowd merely pretended to be split into two factions. K returns to the court the following Sunday but is told there is no hearing scheduled. He meets a washerwoman, who turns out to be the wife of a court usher. She tries to seduce him and offers her help with his case if he would take her with him, away from this court she so despises, as both the magistrate and a legal student have been making advances on her. The student arrives and takes the woman away quite abruptly from her talk with Kay. He then meets the woman's husband, who gives him a tour of the court offices. From this he learns some defendants are more or less always in the waiting room, where they grow weak and confused. Kay himself grows faint in their presence and needs to be led outside. While working at the bank, Kay opens a storage room to find Willem and Franz being whipped by a man in black leather. The troubled guards say that Kay's criticism about them before the court led to them having this punishment. Kay says he didn't realize his words would lead to these consequences for them, and he offers a bribe to the thrasher, but he refuses to stop. Kay leaves and returns the next day to discover the exact scene playing out again. Upon hearing rumors about Kay's trial, Kay's uncle Carl visits from the country to help Kay with his case. They visit Herr Hold, a lawyer who is very ill and bedridden. A court official is already present, seeming to be visiting Herr Hold. As the men discuss Kay's case, Kay is drawn away when Lenny, Hold's nurse, smashes a plate outside the room. She seduces Kay and the two make love. 
K is told off by his uncle, who says his leaving the room showed a lot of disrespect and this has done harm to how Hold and the official regard him. K slouches at the bank and considers how he has continued to visit Hold but has grown irritated with Hold's hesitations to reveal what progress has been made in the discussions Hold has had with court officials. K believes he must fire Hold and take charge of the case by submitting a detailed summary of his entire life. K's preoccupation is interrupted when one of his clients visits and tells K to meet with a painter who could be helpful. K leaves work to visit Titarelli, who is a court painter, painting pictures of judges is his profession. Titarelli offers helpful but crushing information about the court, saying that he has never heard of anyone's case leading to acquittal. K's only options are to keep his case active indefinitely, by keeping the sensitive judges happy, or temporarily stop the proceedings with the risk that he could be arrested again at any moment. At Hold's home, K meets Block, a merchant who is a fellow defendant and client of Hold's. While Lenny looks after Hold, Block tells K that he has been working his case for five years and has employed five lawyers other than Hold. Block was once successful in life, but since the case he has lost all his time and money to it. When Lenny joins their conversation, K rushes to Hold's room to tell him he is dismissing him from his case. Hold gives him time to reconsider and invites Lenny and Block into the room. K watches as Hold demonstrates his power by humiliating Block and treating him like a dog. At work, K is tasked with showing an important Italian client of the bank around the cathedral. They arrange to meet there, but the Italian doesn't arrive. A priest enters the pulpit of the dark church and addresses K by name. He tells him that he is the prison chaplain, and he has come to talk about the case, which he understands is not going well. The priest tells K a parable about a man who spends his entire life waiting to enter a door to the law only to learn from the guard in front of the door that no one else has tried to enter because the door was made especially for the man. K believes the parable is about how the man is deceived, while the priest is more sympathetic to the guard. On the night before K's 31st birthday, two men who seem to be court officials arrive at his room. They take him by the arm to a quarry beyond the city limits. In the moonlight, they strip K's clothes and push his head down on a flat stone. While one man holds his neck, the other plunges a long, thin butcher's knife into Kay's heart and twists. As he dies, Kay cries out, like a dog. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.